Today, I'd like to greet you all with this wonderful celebration and holiday. Merry Christmas. Today, I'd like to continue off with the topic of Christmas because Christ's coming shouldn't be just celebrated on one day or just a couple days of the year, but his birth should be thought about and celebrated every day. I'd like for all of us to open up to Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And these verses have some very interesting and odd reasons why his birth was so significant. Why is it that we celebrate it? But it's the most amazing birth that has ever happened in all of history and has so much meaning behind it. Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In these past verses, there are some interesting but odd things being said that I'll be talking about, but mainly I wanna focus on verse seven from these verses, where we see that Jesus Christ the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, the Son of God, he was born and laid in a manger. He was born into this world and put into a manger. Why is that so significant? A manger is not a suitable thing for a baby. It's a narrow and long container which animals would eat out of. That is not something fit for a person of high status, not for a king, not for God, not even for an average person, and not even for poor people. Jesus, the king of kings, had been put into the lowest position. He received that Jesus came humbly into this world. I just think that if I were a king and I had a bunch of power, I had a bunch of glory behind my name and I was to enter into a place somewhere, I wouldn't want to come in a way that would go through dirt. I would want to roll out a red carpet. I would want people to be singing songs about me and I would want everybody to know that I'm coming into town. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, chose not to come this way. Jesus could have come in a way that showed his power, showed his might, showed his glory. He could have had a golden staircase come down from heaven while angels were singing for everybody in the world to see, but he didn't choose to do that. He came in more of a humble way. Jesus' birth definitely was the most amazing birth in all of history, not because he showed anything as in visible for everybody, not for the whole world to see, but this event had so much meaning behind it. And it was amazing because of the humility that was put into this event. Jesus had humbled himself when he came into this world, but there was more meaning behind that. At the moment, there were so many prophecies being fulfilled in this exact moment of his birth and after his birth and his life and his death and his resurrection. But at the moment of his birth, he would be born of a virgin maiden. That was a prophecy. He would be from the line of David. He would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Also, he would be born in the town of Bethlehem. And there's a prophecy from Micah chapter 5, verse 2, where it says, But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth, from me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, 
from ancient days. That was a very significant prophecy because it wasn't by no mistake that at the time of Jesus' birth, when it was time for him to give birth, that Mary and Joseph would be in Bethlehem. God's control, God's timing, God's planning, he prepared everything to complete and fulfill the prophecy, to complete and fulfill God's plan. Everything was under his control. God knew everything. God prepared everything. The time gap between the Old and the New Testament, where people so call it the silence from God, God wasn't silent. He was working in the world in so many different ways, but it just wasn't recorded in the Bible. There are other books like the book of Mac- books of Maccabees, which are not included. They're historical events. There's many historical events that are happening between this time that was true, that was evident. God was working. But another way, God was not staying silent. He was moving. He was working in the world. He was preparing the way for the Messiah to come. Alexander the Great had conquered most of the known world in 323 B.C., How is that significant to how this message was to be spread? Well, when Alexander the Great conquered most of the known world, he spread Greek as the common language throughout the world so that everybody would know Greek. And this way, when people go to different towns, when they're trading, when they go to markets, they speak Greek because the common language everywhere you go. And this way, by everybody knowing a single language, the message of the gospel could be spread. The message of Jesus Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection could be spread. This message wouldn't be left only for the Jews, but for all people. Jews, Greeks, Gentiles, all people of the world. As the angel said, he brought great news of joy for all people. And Jesus' birth was showing humility, but still showing the power of God, the power and might of God. God is all-knowing, all-powerful. He knew when it was time, and he prepared everything for the time. And I heard a man named Mark Lowry say some interesting, powerful words, where um, this man, he was singing the Gaither vocal group. He wrote the song, Mary, Did You Know? Um, He was talking with his father, And his father had this idea that Jesus, at the time of his conception, he knew that he was already in existence. He knew who he was. But Mark, well, I already disagreed with his father. Because he said that Jesus, when he came into this world, Mary had to teach him how to walk. Mary had to teach him how to talk. Mary had to feed him. When he came into this world, he left his omniscience. He left his omnipotence. He left his omnipresence and wrapped himself in flesh so that we could know him. I just thought that those words were powerful and great because it shows that Jesus left everything behind. He left his kingdom, all his glory, all power, and came down to this earth. He became flesh, and also in the sight of man, he became poor. He wasn't born in a proper place. He wasn't laid in a proper place. He was laid in a manger. And from this, we can guess that he was born in a stable. Not confirmed, but I feel sorry for the people in the inn that there was no place for Jesus because only a few barn animals Mary and Joseph got to witness the entrance of the king. Now I'd like to bring this topic more to our attention. Jesus came humbly into this world and lived a life in humility. Why is it that Jesus deserves praise and glory? Not just through his life, not just through his death and resurrection, but also this significant event of his birth. He humbled himself to the utmost. And if you know, Jesus once said these words, 
Whoever praises themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be praised. Jesus humbled himself more than any person has ever in all of time, in all of history. And for that, he deserves to be lifted and praised more than anyone ever has been. Jesus was humble. He also calls us to be humble. I know in my life I've shown pride. A lot of people here, we all have issues of pride. We have too much pride in our hearts to forgive somebody. We have too much pride in our hearts and try to take praise for ourselves instead of giving it to God. I've had that in so many ways and so many times still have issues with it. But all the time when I try to give myself praise and try to make myself proud, puff up my chest, God knows how to humble you. God knows how to make you get back on your level. So you realize that you have nothing to be proud about for yourself. I know that he calls us as a church to be humble. First, to humble ourselves before him. Give him praise and glory that he deserves. He lived a perfect life. Yes, poor and not rich and overall humble. But he lived a perfect life so that he could be perfect, the perfect sacrifice for us. He then conquered death and sealed our salvation in him. When he first came into the world, he showed his humility so that we can take an example from him. Before we pray, I just wanted to quickly get some, to quickly say some words that kind of reached out to me in my heart. As we know, Jesus will come again. First time he came, he came in humility. A great example of humility to all of us. But the next time he comes, he won't come so humble. He'll come with his full glory and power shown to the world. Next time he will come, he's going to come for the church. Every knee will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Will you be ready? Nobody was ready for the first coming of Jesus. Yes, there were some that believed, were waiting, but nobody expected it. I don't think we're going to expect the second coming. I think it will be a shock to all of us. And even the Bible, it says, nobody knows the time and the hour. Are you ready to humble yourself before Jesus Christ, make him your savior? Jesus Christ humbled himself and came down to earth so that you can know him. Are you ready to humble yourself so that he can know you? Think about the reason for this season, this holiday, for this celebration, how important Christ's birth is in each of our lives. Coming into the new year, is your heart ready? Any, anything can happen this next year. His first coming was amazing and humble. Church, prepare yourself for his second coming. And with this, I'd like us to stand up or kneel and pray before God. Just think about why we come to here, why we came on this holiday, what is the reason? Are you ready for a second coming? Amen.